I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. And I'm Nathan. And this is Three Old Tech Dudes. No, really, it is. You know what? They're sitting on the table. I think that means that this week's main segment is a show and tell. We've got some lovely simulated wood grain finish here. Yeah. Some chrome on the front 40 there. And that that's my favorite combo. Yeah, that's it's that's the, sharp. The, simulated, the wood grain and the simulated the sil- wood grain silver. over particle board. The, the sil- <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of particle board. There's the silver look of the late 70s and early 80s there mm-hmm. on the front. This this toy here is a Regency touch k100 scanner touch you can touch it you can it feels touching i don't know the history behind that name i assume it's due to the programming buttons on the front which was a novelty uh, at the time yes. would be that, yeah so this is of the Ble- same vintage frequency this there. this is roughly the same vintage of the scanner that we did on the channel very early on that justin owns from radio shack was Tim, real, timmy almost died so, yes <laughs> way back in the day hmm. Um, I don't know which a, came first. It was a terrifying oh. event that day. Um, <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit of history of the company Regency. It, it's it started as a division of Idea, which it was a division of three. There was Monitor Radio, Regency, and one other. I don't remember what it was, but there was Idea was an acronym for Industrial Development Engineering Associates. It was started by two RCA engineers who were being told they had to go to New Jersey. And they yeah, said, well, we want to stay in Indiana. This company was headquartered in Indiana. So they just they will, just quit and started their own company. Do, people will do yep. that in Indiana. Indiana people like to stay in Indiana. We really don't lot, like to so move. It was no. headquartered in Indianapolis, just off of Pendleton Pike. Yep. And uh, they their big claim to fame was they worked with Texas Instruments to release the very first pocket transistor radio ever. Not nice. just a radio, but the little tiny ones you put in your pocket, the TR1. Oh. So that is well-documented history. The Regency TR1 was the first transistor radio that you could nice. carry around with you. So with a little, had a 22-volt battery in it. looked kind of like a 9-volt. You so. It's not like the, the radios which I finally gave to you, which were portable radios that were... Right. <laughs> that, that the actual like literature for it shows yep. a picture of this thing on the back of a Model T. Yeah, Ford. exactly. Weighed about 60 and, pounds. Uh, oh, Re- Regency got squeezed out of the market very quickly in transistor radios by uh, a company with a really hard to say Japanese name that rebranded themselves in 1950 something as Sony. Yep. So, but their monitor radio division did very well. And uh, through the 60s, and they made a lot of money, Regency did. And oh, yeah. uh, it, they, they sold a lot of police scanners. I have a tube-type monitor radio that we've never put on the channel that works. It's Ooh. the only FM handband-ish receiver that I have. And it did work last time I tried it. You could receive weather radio on it, which is kind of trippy over tubes. So. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is a, a, one of the radios developed out of their monitor, monitor radio line later on, and they just start using the Regency name. And uh, this, this scanner was given to me by a guy, or I bought it off a guy along with another radio. I'm going to show you guys sometime that uh, <laughs> the other radio had clearly never been used. And this had the styrofoam on both sides, and they said the box was there, but it had gotten wet because I had to scrape a lot of styrofoam off the sides of this wood grain. It may even still look like it had it. But, yeah, uh, still mm-hmm. a few spots. A little bit. Yeah. And... Uh, so I don't know how many hours on this radio, but I suspect very few. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how to program in here and give you a close-up overview. Neat. All right. Got Timmy and Justin here. We're going to poke around on this scanner and show you how to program it. So when you first power it up, you'll see the screen says P fail. That means the power failed. Ingenious. Ingenious, Justin. It is. According to the old yellowed book I found, we want to hit manual. Oh, and it light panel. gave us an LED there. Uh, frequency. Now that LED, that little display is really cool. It's like a first generation LED display with little straight number lines. Like on old pocket calculators. Uh, yes. Let's see if I actually... I used to have one of those. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. Not bad. Okay, to program, 
what you want to do is you make sure you're in manual mode, which once you clear the power fail by hitting manual, that's what you're in. See, each, each of the 10 channels has the 40.475. So what you want to do, and we'll start with a weather radio frequency. You'll enter 162, we're going to do 162500, decimal 500. That's right. You hit enter. Now this is where the, the unit shows its age. Because according to the manual, you've entered this in the display register, which this indicates. You're not programmed at this point, but you do want to see the LED flashing. You'll want to touch the number of the channel you're programming. Nine. Clear. And now it's programmed. Lows in the mid 50s. North winds up to 10 miles an hour. So cool. For Monday, mostly sunny. So we'll do a different one here on number two. We'll do. One four six dot four two zero enter flashing two press two uh, give us a call Justin I'll turn it down a bit testing K D nine I G T there we go how about another one testing testing K D nine I G T Cool. So we'll definitely do two meter ham. Let's try. Oh, four four six. Supposed to have UHF. Six dot zero zero zero. Enter. The buttons don't push real well. It's old. Three. I'll put that on mine here. KB nine. Oh, maybe it's not very sensitive. Well. Maybe, don't Maybe it doesn't work really well on 70 centimeters. There we go. It's just weak. KB9 SNL. It's not working very well at all on 70 centimeters. Hmm. Interesting. It's supposed to receive UHF, I think, but it's not doing a good job. That may just be this unit. It may be old age. So, something mildly wrong with it. I will check on 77 that. at terahertz. Works awfully well on two meters, though. Ported 80 in Evansville. So you can hit scan. And Mostly hit. sunny. Of course, oh, 70. stops every time we get there. At Mattoon. Elsewhere across Indiana. Huh. Oh, okay. You lock out. Yep. Lock you can in. press the number to lock out. That makes sense. I figure there's a way to lock out. So. Testing. KD9 on Yeah, there we go. It's a good looking scanner. It certainly shows the look of the old uh, crystal scanners. Uh, radio scanners from this era that are digitally programmable, and this is among the first. Uh, there was a previous touch model before this one. I'm not sure what the model was. I'll put it on screen here. This is probably a second generation from about 1978, I think. Pretty cool radio. It would still be good for monitoring or ham radio, especially analog ham radio. A lot of your public service now is not analog, it's digital. So it would be good for listening or even using as an APRS receiver. Um, that should work. Let's try that. Cause that should hit just every once in a while. Let's do one, four, five, three, nine. Oh, nope, nope, nope. Gotta do the period. One, four, five, period, three, nine, zero, enter, ten. Zero and ten are combined. If you need to hit zero, ten, in that case, you hit ten. So. We'll catch some APRS hits here in a second. If we lock out all the others that we're not using. Like so many of these old scanners, it goes a whole lot faster. Didn't get eight, did I? It's a lot faster when you're only scanning a couple channels. Makes sense. <laughs> KB9 SNL. Oh, Justin's HG's back there. 
This thing is a little noisy. It has an adjustable delay and a few other features, but that's how you basically program it. So. Adjustable delay, huh? Fancy. Yeah, or something like that. I'm not sure how that works. So this, all this delay does, apparently, is switch between delay and no delay. So the D on the display in case delay, so if I do this, KB9 SNL, it'll almost immediately switch back. Right. And if I hit delay, KB9 SNL testing. You know, hang for a second. There yeah. we go, that's easy. So this scanner does have an ability to search a group of frequencies, like starting low and starting high. So you'll hit search program. The S1 indicator lights will do 146.000, enter, and then you touch the number one. That program's S1. So then, to enter the stop frequency, you hit search program again to make sure search two lights. It appears this has to be S1 lower, S2 upper frequency. So we'll do 147. Uh, Zero, zero. I don't think that took. No. Uh, yeah. Didn't get my decimal entered. So there's S1 still 146. S2 will do 147 dot zero zero zero. Enter. And press two. Now let's do search scan. And now you see the display climbing. There is a repeater in our area, or close to one, I think it's just a birdie though. We'll turn up Squelch to get past him. Come on. I bet it just stops there and stays. Okay, there it went. There's birdies everywhere, Justin. Pretty sensitive to that. <laughs> okay. If it stops, it says you can adjust the Squelch, but that's not worrying. You hit search scan again. Yeah. Birdies all over. I have a laptop near here. I'm gonna close the laptop. You know, there's lots of birdies on this old beast. So takes it a second to restart. <laughs> Goodness. There's a list of birdies in the manual. So I'm not expecting to find anything unless there's just a repeater nearby. But that's basically how that works, so. That doesn't sound like y'all's fire. Not to mention y'all don't use air. I thought that's some bomb on this. I don't think I think I'll get my HT. It's well, the band might be open again, honestly, because of how that sounds. Yeah, I it's like. If, <laughs> I wonder if it's not a different. Yeah, I bought. We did find some dispatch stuff from somewhere, but the bands may be open. These uh, frequencies, two meters and up, have been really hot. <laughs> See, well, what's a good code for the repeater, Justin? What gives us the time? 700? I don't remember anything. Oh. Well, this thing is noisy. Well, it's the time. Yeah, it's generating ID. Gotta Gotta turn that myself here, you know. Keep turning HT off when I'm turning it down. <laughs> KB9 SNL. That's either the microprocessing system that this uses or something, but it's very noisy on the speaker. I think this is a really low hour scanner. I, it still had the styrofoam on it. It didn't have the 
whipping tin on it. I borrowed one off an old unit and bearcat I have. It did have the lug that you thread it onto. I was able to use that, but I bet this didn't see a lot of hours. It, it came with another item I have that's an that will be a future unboxing video. A very cool vintage high-end Citizens Band uh, base from 1977 or 78. So that'll be in a video sometime later this year, hopefully. Breaker 19. Breaker 19. So that's how you program the Regency Touch K100. Well, fellers, got a new segment for you this week. All right. We like new segments on 3L Tech Dudes, don't we? What are we doing? This is the sure. first new segment. So this one's called CB Talking. Breaker 1 9. Audio. <laughs> I do that right. Break nice. 1 9. This be the tall man. What was your handle? You had to handle a bit once. Um, you know, I don't remember. I was the tall man. Mm. He didn't have any. You, remember. you remember your handle? You have a handle? Oh, do you ever have my. just one? Some people never. Some people change it every week. I, I kept yeah. one. I was a tall man. I think it was just Nathan. <laughs> you can't use your real name on the radio. What are you? That's crazy? dangerous. No. Well, so um, you remember John Shire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and I used. He was your CB buddy. He was a CB buddy, but we both kind of got really tired of it really quick. We got cussed out on CB. Oh yeah, and left it. Mm. It's, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the jungle out there in CB land. I think it's, it's, it's like, a lot better now. Kind of like what Twitter is now. I don't know if it's better. I well, <laughs> I because I, I know a few people on CB and they're not as mm -hmm. out there as so, it used to be with things. Because it used to be mm, downright That's mean, good. Honestly. So, uh, CB, so, Citizens Man talking or CB talking this yep. segment, we're going to do something to teach you how to talk on the Citizens Man. All the words you need to know, all the secret secret code words. That's a 10-4 there, good buddy. All right, all right. This week's, this you, week's word. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Motion lotion. Motion uh, lotion. The definition um, of motion lotion. Yeah, let, let's get to that before to my brain goes somewhere. Um, yeah. It's fuel. You need a, you need a uh, sentence. You know, it's kind of like a spell. You know, spelling bee, right? Wouldn't it go go juice? No, uh, that's, that, that's, that's well. Was, that's but. I like motion lotion better because it's <laughs> well, funny. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta hop off back. the interstate here, get some motion lotion. I'm going on the side. I'll stop by to choke and puke, pick up some motion lotion. That really All doesn't right. help, does it? No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And this has been Citizens Band Talking. Oh, my. Mm. Mm. Oh, my word. I think it's the you only thing. back I... one out of here now. Good buddy. I hear, hear an echo. Oh, that's nope. just the mic. Hey. Hear an echo? Oh. Nope. Is it an echo <laughs> mic? I, I hear that. Uh, what is that? Oh, oh, no, it's not. Um, oh, it's not on that? I, it's I coming those. from the padded rooms oh. of the YouTube comment section. Ooh. <laughs> Otherwise known as that part of the show <laughs> where we, we read your comments on three old tech dudes videos echoes from the asylum. I got good radio voice tonight. I do. Right. <laughs> Who first, are we hearing from this week? First up yep. this week on the video uh, 2019 Columbus, Indiana ham fest finds. I call ICT two G A T H T. Get that thing out. You like to beam people with it. Oh, he oh. loved, he has loved this radio ever since then. He carries it. It's his go-to. It is HD my go-to. It is. It is his well, favorite. Cause so. programming that thing takes about <laughs> a second and you don't have to have yes. a degree in quantum I, uh, mechanics. I checked into a net with that radio the other night. Did I not? So you, Last time we were you did. Club together. You did. Yep. I think we all three. We did. I, one, I did we? check in it, and yep. I thought this is a nice radio. Yep. So, Indrid Cold writes, I purchased a similar handheld tra tra transceiver. Mm -hmm. and I know there's one of these in this room, too. An ICOM IC2AT well, there. <laughs> at the twilight hours of a rummage sale going on Oh, nice! at a church parking lot. Wow. Mm. I paid $10. $10. <laughs> That's, I paid uh, 8 and ten, what was it? Mm, it wasn't I a lot. Look, so like we, a whole we had box video. of stuff. You did have a lot of battery, though. One of, well, yeah. So this is the battery. Yeah, yeah. That is one um, of the fifty-eighth annual Hamfest videos we shot. Yeah, the first year um, we did a booth out there. Yeah, and the I bought one that didn't have any parts to it, yep. and then I bought another one that had like a box of stuff, <laughs> like including <laughs> the drop-in charger. And I think I think one yeah. of them was like eight, and the other was like twenty or something. He like that, is but set up now. 
Don't these um, use the same battery? Yes. Well, yeah. That's kind of cool because this, this is a considerably be... newer radio than the 2AT. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the 2AT fact, was ICOM's original 2-meter the... synthesized FM, I think. Yeah, and the Radio Shack radios use the same battery. Oh, oh, nice. Cool. So, and this battery that's on this one right now so is like the actually. So, like the HTX-202 Radio Shack one? Yep. Yeah. So, this battery, which is the BP-8, mm-hmm. um, I got new I'm at about a year now, I guess, a year and a half now. Okay. Um, you can buy these new off of Amazon, so. <laughs> um, but, so, yeah. uh, so I'll go grab that. Okay. So he can, yeah, go ahead and grab that, and I'll keep reading his comment here. Uh, everything seems to work fine, even the battery. It receives excellently. I cannot legally transmit on it since I am not an amateur radio operator, but from specifications looked up, it seems it will transmit 150 milliwatts on low and 1.5 watts on high. Yep. A screamer. Production started in the mid 70s and ended in the mid 80s. Yep. That's correct. Perhaps this may someday lead to a licensing. It will likely have to be a simplex operation transceiver mainly. That's true due to CTCSS in some cases. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We Sometimes. actually have a local repeater that it's not uh, turned on on, so we are actually able to use the 2AT. Yeah, we'll show you that here in a second because we are licensed. Um, as you know. I have set up many stations from the Volunteer Fire Brigade and Ambulance Service to amateur radio operators. I have also repaired, modified, and installed transceivers, made amplifiers, made manual antenna tuners, made antennas, installed towers, and such. It is easy money. So he builds a lot of stuff, but he doesn't license it. Let's see if it works. Give it a shot. Volume. There it is. Get him your mic here. Beep. Drop the call sign. Maybe not GME testing. There you go. Now you're going to have somebody holding no, back. He's got to turn it off so you can't hear him. <laughs> Station <laughs> testing. So there Didn't you go. There's, catch that call. there's another vintage two, two AT that's working just fine still. So yeah, and I have two of these, actually. Yeah, those and have thumb wheels on top for the tuners, how yep. old they are, with just like old odometer style numbers on them. So. Hold it, sure. sure. So our uh, commenter continues. He's uh, built a lot of things for ham radio, and it's easy yeah. money. He just lacks the. He says, "I just like the social aspect needed to be an amateur radio operator." But it is a fascinating hobby, utilizing technology from the beginning of communication oh. all the way up to the cutting edge of today's communication. Maybe if I could feel comfortable being social, and I will use the vintage ICOM IC two AT to transmit. What caught me about this comment wasn't so much talking about the radios, but the the conversation that it kind of invokes talking about being comfortable talking on the radio. Ah, yes. That uh, actually does take a little bit to get used to. But um, so for me, it was not too bad because what I did is I found the ham club and went to the ham club. Now, I mean, obviously, if you have like social anxiety disorder, or yeah. whatever the uh, term is actually called. Sure. Um, that may be a little bit more difficult for you. But uh, just being afraid to trans, you know, to transmit on the radio. um yeah, I know I could say, you know, don't worry about it because it's not that big of a deal. Everyone does it, and everyone kind of goes through it the first time. Yeah, I know that's kind of like overstating the obvious for someone who really And this has does a sound a little more like he really struggles with yeah, so anxiety over it, even. If you have... And social interaction in general. Well, and and that's, that's yeah, and I have friends who are that way, and, and I get it. Um, I, if you can... I would suggest uh, finding your local ham club or just finding another person who maybe is a friend who's a ham and just start talking to them on the radio, just specifically just them, and then work your way out from there. Because it's, it's, you know, baby steps. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, because my – and I, you, would, you would think I probably wouldn't necessarily be that sympathetic to that, but that's – my wife deals with the mental health care industry. Yeah, so, yeah, I, 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 I see that, and, and I, I get it. Yeah, um, honestly, if you can get past that, a lot of guys get licenses for other reasons, not just to talk, but to, yeah. you know, just to do digital modes. Those are popular. Yeah. Of course, that's yeah. more of a HF thing than a technician level license in most no cases. no intention but, of talking on the radio when I got right, licensed. Right. Yeah, you didn't. That's an interesting thing. He just happened to take the chance to answer me one day if I recall, maybe. I can't remember if you transmitted I first I, or I think I did. threw my – I did decide to go ahead and transmit. My, yeah, and I'm like, call. oh, fresh blood yeah. no <laughs> fresh but, uh, new friend um, well that's just it <laughs> so it is one of those things that you will you will definitely if you get into it and talk to people you will find people who are very friendly very nice oh absolutely and, and can be mm-hmm. lifelong friends the majority um 
a couple I, of oddballs know, mixed in. Yeah, yeah, it's with any true, hobby or group yeah, of people. Yeah. So, um, it's I know it's hard sometimes if you have social anxiety disorder to deal with that kind of stuff. But again, start small, and you know, yep, go from there, and or try it on a digital mode first. Yeah, because that you don't actually have to talk, but you still. It's just an exchange, yeah. right? Yeah, just an exchange, digitally. absolutely. Um, yeah, that's a good way to get your, you know, just get your. Just listen, listen. right? Yeah, we have a lot of people that listen to us, or we used a to. And we still do. When a we lot uh, of people say they listen a lot, or they'll recognize our voices, which I think is interesting. If we're in a group somewhere, <laughs> when so. we uh, all we like, I I still haven't went back to work completely to into the office mm. uh, because after COVID we kind of stopped. Um, but back when we were all commuting regularly, we had kind of had like a little morning show going every, every day. People would jump in from wherever or we'd get a new one every once in a while. And this is just on a single repeater, not like a link setup or anything like and that. We've had so, yeah. many people come up to us and, and didn't know them from Adam. And they're like, I know your voice. Yeah, I listen to you every day. <laughs> and it's like, we listen to you guys. It's like the morning show. <laughs> like, like, yep. That's well, not supposed to be. Like, but I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're like, sure. Is that a good yeah. thing? Do, should we uh, apologize or should we be happy? <laughs> they're usually happy to, that they yeah, put a just, face with a voice is what yeah, it is. So it's kind of fun. So. Well, we got another comment. This one's a whopper. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Do I need to bring her another radio over here? No. Okay. <laughs> this one tickles me. On the Realistic Pro 2001 scanner, one of our early videos, one that is not... Our early videos are not very tight. We were kind of getting the ropes mm-hmm. down. I don't apologize for them. You got to start somewhere. Was that but my scanner? It is. I still okay. thought some of those early ones were funny. Yeah, they were. And this yeah. one had funny moments. Uh, you almost died. Captain Midnight. A great authoritative figure, clearly. I guess. Captain Midnight. Okay. <laughs> right. And I quote. A few gossiping biddies talking about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> gossiping. Okay, sure. We're goss- a few gossiping biddies talking about nothing. I don't remember that video having any gossip in it. I think se. we probably name dropped a lot or something. I'm sure we, we just talked about people we knew. I guess we're just gossiping. I don't recall us gossiping. I don't. I don't I, I, this we video is from like the end of 20 or early part of 2019. I mean, I'm I've slept so much since then. I'm not defending the, the video by any means. But, I don't care what we said, um, but that's funny. I, don't I think it's gossiping. supposed to be an insult, <laughs> but it made me laugh. Hmm. As you know, fertilizing the trolls often does. That's, I hope Captain Big Knight yeah. comes back and says some more mean, mean stuff. That'll make for some really good oh, I don't mind. echoes from the asylum later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, that's fine. I, you know, my I goodness. I, you know, I think this is the same video where somebody just come on, commented something like, for the love of God. <laughs> that's all it's like. <laughs> it's like. They love us. They really love us. <laughs> He is actually like this normally. This is not unusual. I'm trying to control my laughter wow. for three old tech dudes, but it's failing me badly that right vodka now. that's in that? <laughs> no. No, I'm just abused over, <laughs> over Captain Midnight here. This was Kroger water. So thank right? you, Captid Midnight, for that constructive criticism. We are uh, a church. Did it get turned into I've wine? never been called a bitty. That's an old woman term. That's, it is. Yeah, I've never. It is. That's new. You old bitty. You old bitty. <laughs> Gossiping old bitties. <laughs> Bunch of dirt bags. What's an old bitty a gossiping old woman that's with blue hair. Yeah. <laughs> that's that kind of old lady. You can do gossiping old bitty. Thelma Harper. I, that's Mama. Mama is that's a gossiping old bitty from Mama's family. Yeah, Carol was not that old. There, no, she wasn't. She made it out. <laughs> I love that stuff. I love that show. That's what I think of when I read it. So. Look anyway, so that's uh, she. It was on there originally. That's not oh, yeah. like I almost sort of said a bad word. I didn't. She was. <laughs> yes, she was on the Carol Burnett show. Okay, okay. that's where mm-hmm. they, they originally did a sketch called a "Sketch Called Family." I can't talk. And a sketch called "The Family," oh, which is mildly okay. funnier than the actual show <laughs> later in the eighties. <laughs> <So. laughs> well. That's okay. That's echoes from the asylum for this episode. If you'd like your comment featured. Well, you don't get to pick if it's featured. Make a comment, and maybe we get lucky. Yeah. We do two an episode, so drop that in the little bleep bloop box below, and <laughs> or on any video that you feel pertinent to say something about. So it can be about nostalgia. It can be about you know something cool. It can be about you can call us names. Like apparently, mm-hmm. that's a different one. So I think you owe Derek okay. some money for using the term bleep bloop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I probably do. <clears throat> 
I'm a Watch Vice Grip Garage on on YouTube. There's his his comment. There you, you know, go. Our our hundreds of subs could go look help his millions grow. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what, what's that buzzing around me? Right. Yeah, splat. <laughs> <laughs> Just Pretty a much. few gossiping old men who's talking about that. <laughs> That's all it is. That's fine. Uh, I hear water. I feel waves. Me too. Oh, it's raining outside. It's time. Oh, it is raining it's outside. It's time for that segment of the show where we welcome a new ham radio operator to the illustrious hobby of amateur radio. Dude, welcome, welcome to the waves. That's right. I, I could have done that better. <laughs> well, I don't need to do all the talking. That's that's what we do from now on. Dude, so, that is now established as precedent so, for every time we do that's welcome waves in the future. So <laughs> this week. We welcome Philip Zayo, KD2WQB, from, I had to pick some New York City, I can't say, mm. Pachigu, Pachigu, New York. He tested straight to general. Neat. Double test, technician to general. That is Kilo yeah. Delta 2. We like to Quebec. apologize for butchering the name of both your last name and the Could be town. Zayo, Zayo. I don't know. Anyway, but. Welcome to the hobby. Indeed. Hope to catch yep. you on HF somewhere. That'd be great. Or maybe if two meters opens, two meters. It could yeah. happen, yeah. yeah. It does happen. So enjoy your time in the hobby and uh, don't let it expire after 10 years. Too many people do that. You see that a lot. They? So, yeah, they'll let it expire the first time it goes. So That's they've already lost their interest. So That is unfortunate. Yeah. <sighs> wonder if anybody's ever forgotten to renew and like it didn't even occur oh, to I'm them. sure that they're just like so, oh that happened for 30 years i've had to remind my call. dad something though somebody will eventually get them when they look them up no they yeah. won't get them they'll tell them usually and uh, like hey you need to fix that <laughs> you have a year uh, after expiration right yeah two not right. two roughly two you don't have to yeah. retest um if you have a ham you'd like to recognize or a new ham uh, here on yep. Three Old Tech Dudes, send us an email at the dudes at threeoldtechdudes.com or give us a message on our Facebook page. Just search for Three Old Tech Dudes. Send their call sign, their name, and uh, any other info you'd like us to say, and we will make it happen. Well, I think that's all we got for this week, fellas. I think so. Awesome. Till next time, I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. And I'm Nathan. And this is Three Old Tech Dudes. Thanks for hanging out with us here on Three Old Tech Dudes. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more tech old and new, tinkering at the workbench, repairs, ham radio, electronics, computers, and more. Please like this video and share 3 OTD with your friends to help us grow the channel. We tweet at Three Old Tech Dudes one on Twitter, and you can keep up with us on Facebook. Just search for 3 OTD and look for our logo. Thanks so much for watching.